So I'm going to switch gears a little bit. We've been talking about the intense alkylating agents and shrinking down tumors. Uh, one of the perhaps surprising observations over the past few years uh, has been that somatostatin analogs, which we typically think of as using to control hormone symptoms, uh, also seem to have an antiproliferative effect. Uh, the first of those studies uh, was not in pancreatic nets, it was in carcinoid tumors. Uh, it was called the PROMID study, and, and John, you've been doing some work with somatostatin analogs. Um, can you summarize the PROMID study for us and what, sure. it, what it meant? So but the PROMID study looked at patients with uh, metastatic midgut carcinoids, in other words, carcinoid tumors originating in the small intestine. They were predominantly low-grade tumors, and it randomized patients to uh, octreotide LAR 30 milligrams versus placebo with time-to-tumor progression as the primary endpoint. And the results were quite impressive. The time-to-tumor progression increased from six months on placebo to 14 and a half months with uh, octreotide LAR, um, confirming that octreotide can inhibit tumor growth, even though the objective response rates were quite low. And so based on that, have you been using octreotide to control tumor growth? So I personally have been using octreotide even long before the PROMIT study, but just based on previous um, non-randomized data suggesting that a large fraction of patients with progressive disease achieve disease stabilization. Uh, I've also done the same with pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors, and that practice has recently been validated by the Clarinet study, which I think we're going to be yeah. probably talking about next. So that's the, the perfect lead-in. So the, uh, the Clarinet study, which just came out this year, uh, was it similar in its design, uh, although had a, a broader uh, range of neuroendocrine tumors uh, that were included. And perhaps, Diane, you can give us some of the details on that. Absolutely. So the Clarinet study was a study of 200 patients, a very well-designed, um, randomized, uh, blind control of lanreotide, which is this metastatin analog, very similar to octreotide in terms of the receptor status of two and five. Um, and they randomized about 100 patients uh, to placebo and another 100 patients to lanreotide. Uh, and again, in a very positive and exciting uh, results to show that in fact, we have again with this drug put the brakes on or had this anti-proliferative effect. Uh, the placebo arm though, interestingly, it took the patients on the placebo arm um, about 18 months in general for the cancer to grow. Um, and the lanreotide arm, um, that progression-free survival has not yet been met. So I think that unquestionably we've now proven with these two trials um, that smenostatin analogs can help control the cancer, recognizing that it doesn't cause a lot of tumor shrinkage. Um, but m one of the take-home points I think is also, again, to, to focus on that placebo arm to say many of our patients do have indolent disease and we could very easily, well, watching them carefully, we could think about um, watchful waiting as opposed to starting therapy uh, in some patients um, because uh, some of them will take over a year and a half for the cancer to grow. So if I could just expand a little bit. So the clarinet trial um, looked at both midgut carcinoids and pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. I think there were about uh, 90 pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors and 70 midgut carcinoid tumors. And uh, when you look at time pro to progression in each individual subtype, it was statistically significant for midgut carcinoid tumors and very close to statistically significant for pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. I think the p-value was 0 0.06. And the study really wasn't powered to look uh, at individual subtypes. So there's a very strong sense uh, that it uh, does work uh, in pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors, even though, strictly speaking, it didn't meet statistical significance for that cohort. And as you said, it was a subgroup analysis. It wasn't powered to look at that. But if you looked at the time to tumor progression in the mid-gut placebo arm, for example, right. that was 21 months versus not being reached in the experimental arm. And for the pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors, um, the time to tumor progression was a year as opposed to not being reached in the lanreotide or experimental arm. So yeah. we've known for a while that pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors, you know, in general, will have a shorter progression-free survival as opposed to the carcinoid or mid-gut. Right. So taking a step back from a surgical oncologist's perspective, how does the, the new clarinet data uh, impact you? Uh, do you think it's going to change your practice? Do you think it's going to be meaningful? Um, yeah, for me personally, I don't think so. I, I've got experience similar to uh, John and probably Diane as well that when you have, uh, that we've been using these for a while. And we've certainly used them in the functional tumors when we have diplomas and glucagonomas and metastatic uh, gastronomas, for example. And we've seen the tumors that were formerly progressing when we employ this therapy ostensibly just for the hormonal control to get the patient's symptoms under control, that we can see these things stabilize. 
And so then we began extrapolating that into the non-functional. So these were, these were non-functional tumors in this trial. And um, the, uh, I think it, it validates that which we've been doing, even if it, we didn't quite get the statistical significance. And I'll leave it at that. But I think it is nice to have that data now, level it one is. data it's, to it's, suggest. It's, I mean, I certainly it, it will does. feel much more comfortable using it in pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors and other non-mid-gut neuroendocrine tumors. So some, uh, something that many of us perhaps had been using based on anecdotal experience yeah. or observation, we now feel, uh, we feel vindicated in what yeah. we've been doing the past few years. Uh, another important question, though, and, and Diane, you had alluded to this, is that the, you know, the placebo arm in the, in the Clarinet study was, was pretty long. It was 18 months. Uh, do, do, does either Promit or Clarinet give us any information as to when we should be starting somatostatin analogs to control tumor growth? So I, I take a look at those two trials, and you know we're supposed to learn in clinical trials 101 that you're not supposed to have these cross-trial comparisons. But I think when you do compare the two trials, you recognize more than anything the heterogeneity of the disease. So you can't look at the Promit study, for example, and say, well, the experimental arm was 14 and a half months for octreotide versus not being reached with lanreotide, and therefore choosing lanreotide. Obviously, no one would do that. Um, but I do think it does again suggest that. Um, we are causing some sort of antiproliferative activity with these drugs, but that uh, in the right patient, we may not need to start it right away. So I interpret that data to suggest um, that patients in my practice are not being started right away. It's a little unsettling, that first scan, when you do that scan at the th first you know, three to four months. Um, but once you get past that, if the disease is, and, and very often it's stable. We're not seeing a millimeter or two millimeter, like it's not growing, which is great. Um, and then very often we can follow patients, sometimes for years, without actually initiating that treatment. It's clear, though, that the clarinet trial enrolled an exceptionally slow-growing cohort of patients. In fact, they had, be, they had to complete two scans at least three months apart before even starting treatment, and 96% of patients had stable disease before beginning treatment. Um, so, yes, neuroendocrine tumors tend to be quite slow-growing, but the clarinet trial seems to have enrolled the slowest of the slow. As far as tumor and in the yeah. PROMID trial, it was essentially right out of the gate. We didn't know the cadence of Correct. the disease in that's, the patients that were enrolled in the right. PROMID trial. Yeah. So it's another big difference right. between the two trials, right. besides them being the two different tumor types. Right. And certainly you do have to be very careful in eliciting a very important you know, history and physical exam. Like if a patient is symptomatic, that's a different type of cancer. I also personally use age, you know, so if it's a 30-year-old with big bulky liver disease, you know, clearly there's not anything indolent about that tumor as opposed to an 80-year-old who was incidentally found on imaging to have, you know, low volume liver right. disease. Those are two different biologies. So perhaps the message then is that uh, we shouldn't just uh, sort of have a knee-jerk response and put everyone on these drugs. Uh, that clinical judgment uh, is, is, is really critical, uh, but there seems to be fairly little doubt about the uh, the fact that these trials now both have demonstrated a, a true anti-proliferative effect and that this will be a useful, useful uh, drug class. To answer your early question, one way it's going to impact me is that because these drugs have the side effect of causing cholelithiasis, we will be removing every patient's gallbladder when we <laughs> They do go to the abdomen. OR, right? <laughs> but only if they go to the OR, if right? They go you to don't the take OR, them there we're going to get the okay, gallbladder. That's always something that comes up. <laughs> So I guess to, to that point, these, these, these drugs are, are very well tolerated, but there are some side effects. You, know, you need to watch blood sugar a little bit, and then the other, as you alluded to, uh, they can cause some cholestasis, and, and there's a slightly higher risk of, uh, of uh, developing gallstones. Yeah. yeah. The lanreotide also is subcutaneous, but it's a deep subcutaneous injection as opposed to intramuscular, so there is a little bit difference in terms of administration.